Hi, so in this section, I'm going to describe uh, my settings for Prusa Slicer 2.4.1. This version was released uh, early in 2022 and uh, seems to be pretty stable. Uh, it doesn't have any bugs that I can see uh, as yet. Anyways, there's <clears throat> three levels of experience uh, with this tool. There's simple, advanced, and expert. And as you select the various experience levels, options get turned off or on so you can't see them. I generally leave it at expert level all the time so you can see all the options. Another thing is um, you'll see over here um, a uh, synopsis of what you have set for this, um, this particular model you intend to print. So the print settings are set for, in this case, I called it uh, GTEC A30T Fine Quality. But there, as you can see, I've saved several others. Similarly, for the filament, you can uh, have several instances for that saved as well. And the same thing for the actual printer settings. We'll get into the, all these in a second. This is just a synopsis over here, and you can set the infill right here at 20%. I have it set for. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> as I said before, there's three areas to set up um, Prusa Slicer to match your printer. And in this case here, we're going to start with printer settings, then there's filament settings, then there's actual print settings. So to start with the print settings, um, go to the general tab, and you need to set the size of the platter that you have in this case here is just 320 by 320 millimeters i've already set that cancel and it's 380 millimeters high <clears throat> it has three extruders and the language is marlin legacy the g code not nothing too unique here i basically print six lines along the left hand side of the platter at the beginning of a print just basically to clear out the nozzle it uses extruder one two and three each of them having two lines each for the full length uh, of the y-axis on the platter <clears throat> and uh, the end code is similarly it just basically parks the head and the one thing you do have to do with version 4.2.1 and above i guess is uh, if you're going to be using relative extruder uh, settings you have to add this g-code which is g92e0 um, you don't have to put one in for E1 and E2 because um, it's really just one hot end. Um, so uh, that takes care of the uh, relative uh, positioning of the extruders. Machine limits, I ignore all them. Uh, extruder 1, 2, and 3 are identical except for the color. You can see that you can change the color for each of these. Okay. Um, in this case, I have it set for red, blue, and green. Generally, that's what I run, but uh, you can put any color you want in there. The nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters. The maximum uh, layer limits I've set for 0 0.06 millimeters. <clears throat> Everything else is pretty much uh, straightforward. We'll note that in order to minimize stringing, I have set the retraction and detraction speed to 90 millimeters per second, which is pretty fast. So the extruders uh, zip in and zip out the uh, filament pretty quick out of the extruders and for a maximum length of six millimeters. So it doesn't extract and detract too far, just six millimeters. Um, and I found that these settings provide really good print results with minimal stringing on this printer. And they are all the same. Over on the filament settings, uh, pretty straightforward here. Um, <clears throat> you have uh, three that you're gonna have to set up. So there's, uh, in this case here, I have uh, Matter Hackers build one for the A30T, build two for the A30T, and build three for the A30T. <clears throat> and in this case, it's 1.75 millimeters, uh, no multipliers, cost is $15 per kilogram. And the temperature, which I've, um, uh, got through doing a temperature profile doing a tower um, is 193 degrees and the platter temperature is 60 and that is all the same for all three it just changes the color that's all actually I, I noticed that I've I've got my blue set for 192 which is okay <clears throat> finally um, let's go back to my first finally we've got filament overrides there really isn't any custom G code there really isn't any and then finally over to the print settings this is where um, a lot of details take place so you got to set the layer height in this case here I got that set for fine quality and I put it as 0.1 millimeters the first layer I squashed it to 0.25 or 250 times uh, the 0.1 millimeter size uh, parameters I got set for three you can read all through these the screenshot should be pretty good in this video um, nothing too extravagant uh, or too 
uh, complex to understand how, how to, what to do here. Infill, same thing. Uh, monotonic makes a nice smooth finish on the exterior layer. Rec uh, rectangular uh, also gives you a nice uh, um, fill uh, area without using a bunch of filament as quick. Um, nothing else really too out of the ordinary here. Skirt and brim, if you want to do those, you can. I do. Um, support material, um, you can generate support material or not, auto-generate it, etc. Um, I set the speed here. Perimeters are 70 millimeters and small perimeters at 35. And these work pretty good for me. Pretty, pretty, quick, um, pretty quick print times. Multiple extruders. Now, when you want to do a wipe tower, and some people have said you can't use a wipe tower with Prusa Slicer uh, 2.4.1, you can. And I use it quite often. You just basically enable it here. Um, you're going to run, want to run this a few times to figure out what is the size of the uh, square or rectangular that gets printed as the wipe tower because you want to make sure that you're cleared out all the filament from the last color before you switch to the new color. So play around a little bit, figure out how long it takes to actually get the old filament out and put the new filament in. Um, so a little bit of experimenting there. Um, <clears throat> and you can save this as, um, you can see I've got that turned on here in the um, fine quality with a wipe tower. Uh, put it back with fine quality. And um, advanced, um, <clears throat> I, I actually put the 0 0.4 in here. You don't have to, you can put zeros in here. And uh, the tool will automatically uh, pull this number from the nozzle diameter. Um, so you don't have to do this. I did. I just, I guess I was scared that it, the tool wouldn't pull it out. So I put the 0.4 in there. Everything else is pretty straightforward. No output options. And that's it. That's pretty much setting up the A30T to be run with uh, Prusa Slicer. Now to pull in a, um, an object, I'm going to pull in a simple one, I think. Let's pull in... I'm sorry, let's pull in uh, a simple object. Let's pull in um, the battery cover. That's uh, pretty straightforward. It's just a rectangle with a bunch of holes in it to put bolts through. And you can slice it. You can change the color. Just make it blue. If you want to make it red, you can. Make it green, etc. red. Let's slice it. <clears throat> when the slicing is done, basically it gives you uh, how much time it's going to take. In this case here, um, it's going to take seven hours to print this. Export the G-code. Let's export it. Let's put it in the same old uh, folder. Uh, Multicolor prints. Yeah, that's probably fine. And then what you can do is you can look at G-Code Preview, which is a really nice feature with this tool. Um, let's get out of the battery box and it's multicolor. Battery cover, yep, today's date. <clears throat> Pulling it up over on another screen, I'll have to pull it over. There we go. <clears throat> and you can, um, you can see that the tool is just using Extruder 1 for the whole thing. And you can look at the layers all the way down to the bottom. Get a better view this way. You zoom in. And then if you want to see uh, the thickness, uh, fan speed, temperature, you can look at all that stuff. There's actually a feature within the tool for variable uh, height. I tried it. It doesn't work so good. Um, I gave up on it. But um, that speeds up printing if you want to use variable height feature. But uh, that's, the, uh, that's the viewer. Um, which is a really nice feature um, with this tool. You don't have to guesswork, go into another program, etc. So that's pretty much um, Prusa Slicer 2.4.1 running.